So first of all, you have your pre-design. So despite what a lot of people think, um, we as designers don't just sit down and magically come up with this wonderful design and construction documents and two weeks later, you're into construction. So there's actually quite a lot of homework that uh, both ourselves and our clients have to do up front in order to produce a successful design. Uh, I'd really like to emphasize the importance of establishing a budget. You'll find that one of the first questions that any builder or designer will ask you is, what is your budget? Um, and that's a question that a lot of people are scared to answer. Um, the reason why we need to know your budget at the very beginning is just to know that your project is realistic. So second point, assess marketability and resale. Uh, like Helena was speaking about, it's important to ensure that whatever you build is marketable and will hold a good resale value. Client homework. So this is actually a very important and often underestimated part of the design process. So what exactly is client homework? Well, in a nutshell, it's you as the homeowner going out and finding out exactly what you like and what it is that you want in your project. Um, and I know that sounds a little bit silly um, and elementary, but the reality is actually a lot of people aren't really even sure. So how would you do this? Well, I, I certainly have a few recommendations. Um, first is touring show homes. Um, like I think Helena had mentioned as well, Crystal Creek has a, quite a number of show homes um, in and around the city to tour. And uh, even just driving around the inner city neighborhood and looking at what's out there uh, gives you a very good idea of that um, style that you like and the type of home that appeals to you. Uh, I always advise our clients to start what I call a design file. So basically, it's a compilation of all the magazine clippings, any photos, any brochures, whatever you've compiled that's caught your eye. Um, I've actually provided an online resource, and this is a great website. If you don't write anything else down from my presentation today, write down this website. Um, it's www.house2z.com. Um, the old way of flipping through magazines and ripping them out and making notes on them and tagging them with sticky notes is gone. So essentially this website, you can actually go on there and uh, they have literally tens of thousands of different photos sorted by category and you can actually go in there and basically click on all the ones you like, make notes, um, there's no limit I don't think to um, how many photos you can have and at the end of the day when you're all done, you can just send the link to your designer so that they have access to everything. Um, and the best part is it's free, you just have to sign up. So uh, that is certainly a good resource. So the next point uh, in pre-design is uh, start building your team. So um, this is something that you should do as early as possible, even if you're still going through your land acquisition, trying to find a lot, trying to sell your property, trying to get your, all your financing together. Um, it's, always, it's never too early to start talking to builders and designers. Um, the reason for this is you should always allow yourself enough time to be able to go out and find those right people so you don't feel like you're being rushed into a decision. So site feasibility. Um, this point relates to knowing what you can actually build on a site. So this is actually an example of a preliminary site feasibility study that, we, uh, that potentially can be completed. When you're designing and building an infill, uh, you have to remember that there are certain constraints. Because we are in the, in, the inner city, there's the City of Calgary land use bylaw that we obviously need to be aware of and abide by. So these are things like your parcel coverage, your maximum building height, uh, your building setbacks. Uh, also the community association is involved in inner city builds. So uh, part of the process would be to approach your community association um, and just uh, collaborate with them on your project. Um, that is actually part of the approval process as well. So once you've been engaged and hired a designer, the next step would be to sit down and perform what we call a design programming meeting. So this typically is a very in-depth meeting or sometimes it's a series of meetings where we sit down with you as the client and basically we review everything and anything to do with the design. So this is the meeting or, or meetings where the, all that information you've compiled becomes very, very useful. So once the design programming is complete, we move right into the design. So first off, we have the site. So by site, what I'm referring to is your actual lot. So one of the first things we'll work with is the actual site. We're going to be looking at things like the house orientation on the lot, 
So for example, can we capture some more natural light if maybe we place certain rooms um, in certain areas of the home? Um, are there any views we want to enhance? Uh, sometimes there's views that we want to block. Um, are there any specific grading requirements on the site? So is it a flat lot or is it a sloping lot? Either way, we want to make sure we take advantage of the lot and maximize it. So once the floor plans and elevations have been complete, we'll actually work with our clients through, throughout the design review and revision process. Um, so it's a very collaborative process that involves both the input of the designer and the client. Refining the design through revisions is a very, very normal part of the process, and it is to be expected. So you can expect about anywhere from three to five revision sets at a minimum. Um, although revisions are part of the process, we want to make sure and be very careful that we don't have excessive revisions. Um, excessive revisions can certainly stretch out the design timeline significantly, which, as you can imagine, bumps everything, including your construction start date. Um, you know, if you have financing set up or maybe a deal on the table for a lot uh, with your realtor, you know, it, it, it's all tied in together. So we want to be very careful of that. So the next step would be pricing. So I'm only going to touch very briefly on this subject just because Justin is going to be covering it. Once you reach a certain stage in your design and you have a set of plans produced, a builder can now help you with more detailed pricing for your project. Once the project has been priced, we as designers will make any necessary revisions and tweaks to the design and in collaboration with both the client and the builder. If budget parameters were established up front like I was talking about before, there should be very minor design tweaks at this point. So permits. Once the client is comfortable with the pricing, the project would move into the permitting process. So the permitting portion of a project generally takes about three to four months. Um, this again is a very in-depth process, so I, I've just provided um, a higher level overview. So for any project uh, within the inner city, you're going to need two types of permits. So the first is what we call a DP, which is a development permit, and the second is called a BP, which is a building permit. Uh, detailed plans help compare apples to apples during pricing and again, like I said, they reduce miscommunications and errors on site. Um, and yeah, you can ask any reputable builder or contractor out there, uh, they'll all tell you the same thing. The, the money that you pay for a high quality set of construction plans can easily pay itself off um, during construction. Um, and last but not least, everyone's favorite question, how much does it cost? So obviously costs, as in any industry, can, can vary, but there's definitely um, an average industry range that you should be budgeting for, for design. Uh, you can expect to pay on average um, anywhere between $10,000 and $25,000 to engage the services of an experienced professional design architectural firm. Um, and this is uh, reflective of a typical inner city project, uh, either on a 25 foot or a 50 foot lot. Um, as with most things in life, don't base your decisions solely on price um, and be cautious of lowball deals. You really get what you pay for. Um, it's the same thing with you know, hiring a builder, and Justin will, will speak to this uh, in his presentation. Um, like I mentioned before, um, an inexperienced designer can easily translate to huge issues on a construction site. Um, and as a matter of fact, they can add uh, quite a bit, uh, tens if not, um, or sorry, thousands if not tens of thousands onto the actual project. So um, you may get a good deal up front, but you may easily end up paying for it during the construction stages. So at this time, um, as a summary of my presentation, I'll just share some tips with you. So tip number one, do your homework. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, this includes your site feasibility and your design file. Uh, make sure you've done your homework so that when you're ready to start, uh, you are fully prepared. Tip number two, start early. So make sure you allow enough time for the entire pre-construction process, uh, including permits. Uh, as a rule of thumb, budget anywhere between six to nine months from the time you engage a designer to the construction start date. Build a great team, and you can see I reinforced the early there again. Um, as I mentioned before, the success of your project depends so highly on uh, the experience of the team uh, that you engage. So it's very important to start talking to both a designer and a builder very early on in the process. Establish a budget, again, early. Uh, I cannot overstress the importance of establishing a budget. Um, many important decisions revolve around that budget, so the earlier you have one, the better. 